Today on Trucks, Project Durango Charger's already been lowered three inches all the way around. Now the guys will shake up the exterior of their SUV by adding some trim that'll give it a whole new attitude. After that, we've got a 98 S10 that has a little attitude of its own. Then we'll try to steer you in the right direction with some restoration how-to. That's all today on Trucks. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's show. A few weeks back, we introduced you to Project Durango Charger by dropping it three inches all the way around. Now that we have the stance we want, it's time to give the exterior a little more attitude. Now since trucks and SUVs have gotten so popular over the last few years, the aftermarket's really stepped up and made some cool stuff for them. Like wings, spoilers, hoods, grills, heck, pretty much anything you can imagine. So today we're going to change the look of our Durango with some really cool stuff. Now just last week, Stay showed you the totally functional shaker hood we're going to run. Now this beauty from ProGlass comes with a shaker bubble and all the hardware you need to mount it right down onto the motor. Of course, that's all surrounded by this fiberglass hood that's finished top and bottom. Now before we get you too excited about that hood that uh, looks like it should have a Hemi under it, we're going to replace a few other things first, starting with the air dam. Now I've already disconnected the factory driving lights and now this whole stock bumper assembly is going to come off. Now this top metal impact bumper and the lower air dam come off together. After that you can separate the two. Now make sure you keep track of all this factory hardware because you're going to need it when you put it all back together. Now that Stace has the factory setup out of the way, we can show you what's going to replace it. Now this air dam from Truck Max is a thick fiberglass piece that as you can see is considerably taller than the factory one to get you down lower to the ground. It also has these really slick looking grill inserts and these molded in areas that you can stick up to a five and a half inch lamp into. You ready for this man? Oh yeah. Cool. Now to mount your stock steel bumper down on the new air dam, just set it in place and mark and drill your holes. Now if you've already painted your dam like we have here, Make sure that you put a piece of masking tape either on top of the dam or on the bottom of the bumper so you don't scratch your paint up when you're marking and drilling your holes. How's it look over there? It's perfect. All right. With all the drilling out of the way, we need to bolt these two pieces back together. Now, whatever you do, make sure to use a big flat support washer up against the fiberglass. What this is going to do for you is help spread the load out so you don't crack the fiberglass or pull the bolt head through. Also, be real careful not to over tighten things here. Once you have it all back together, all you need to do is bolt it down. Now, keep in mind an air dam isn't just for looks, they were originally designed to reduce the airflow and turbulence under the vehicle to give you better aerodynamics. That's why you see them on everything from Winston Cup to funny cars. Tell you what, Stace, this looks awesome with our three inch drop. Man, that wheel and tire combination is happening too. <laughs> no doubt. Let's go ahead and rip the hood off, man. Now since our shaker hood completely changes the way our motor is going to get its air, first thing we need to do is pull off the inlet tube. Also, since we're not going to need our filter box anymore, we can go ahead and get rid of that to create some extra room under the hood. The new air box tucks up under the firewall, so we got to get this evaporator sensor out of the way too. All you have to do is pop it loose, take it off, take out this metal insert, move it over here to the other side, then move everything over and remount it on this stud. Now keep in mind, you've got to pop these studs out of the firewall and also move this wiring harness to the other side of the dipstick so you have plenty of room in here. The front part of the bubble is supported by this bracket that bolts right up to the air conditioning compressor and the alternator over here. Once you have that in place, you go ahead and set the lower part of the bubble down onto the throttle body. At this point, you want to set your air cleaner in place and center up the lower bubble. Now, you will notice you got some play here, and you want to leave it loose until after the hood's been mounted so you can get everything straight. Next up is the top of the scoop itself. Now, it's got a rubber seal that runs all the way around it and seals it to the hood, and that acts as a shock absorber. Now, for those of you that don't know, the reason these are called a shaker hood is because with the scoop mounted directly to the motor, the hood will stay still. 
but the scoop will shake with the movement of the engine, which is really cool, especially when you're stomping on the gas. Now, another cool feature are these water drain holes here in the front. That allows the water to drain out so you don't end up with a lake building up around the outside of the scoop. Finally, we can get the hood on this thing. Now, you're definitely going to have to spend some time moving things around to get it centered up. Take your time on this step because nothing looks worse than a crooked scoop on a shaker hood. Now once you have everything lined up the way it should be, then you can put on your hood latch. Now, we're going to reuse the stock latch, but the good news is everything is molded into the new hood, including metal inserts for the bolts. Well, Project Durango Charger is definitely starting to get some attitude now. But before we show you what we're going to do at the grill, we need to take a break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Later in the show, we've got a 98 S10 that's cleaning up on the show circuit. But up next, the guys need to finish out the trim on Project Durango Charger. Welcome back to the shop, everybody. Now, I hope you're not just joining us, but if you are, we're right in the middle of doing a major facelift on Project Durango Charger. Now, I've already put on a shaker hood, as well as an air dam. We're going to finish up this front end with a cool grill treatment. You know, for the longest time, there weren't a whole lot of options on Dodge vehicles, thanks to the crossbar and the stock grill. That's no longer a problem, though, because Stoll Industries has come out with this combination shell grill insert we picked up from carparts.com really going to open things up for us. Here you go, Stace. I'm going to go ahead and get started on the rear. Man. All right, I'll finish up up here. Now, like Mel said, this is called a grill insert, but it's actually more of a grill replacement, which is a lot more involved than just sticking an insert in. Now, we've already put on the grill support from the original hood, but we had to do some modifications to it. First of all, came in here and hacksawed out this centerpiece. Then we also hacksawed this arm off of the original latch. And then finally drilled a hole here for the new latch release. In the rear, just like the front, we're going to use a bumper cover that's also from Truck Max to completely change the look back here. Of course, before we do that, we need to pop off the factory cover. We'll go ahead and get started by popping off this plastic step tread. Now keep in mind, you do have to reuse this, so don't thrash it. After that, disconnect your license plate light, unbolt the cover, and pull it off. Now the good news here is unlike the front, you don't have to pull off the steel impact bumper. Once you have your grill and your shell mocked into place, you can come in here and mark where you're going to want to drill your mounting holes on this inner support. Now, this is one area where you cannot rush because you need to make sure that the grill is centered and squared in the shell before you drill your holes because I guarantee it's going to want to move around on you. Once you've triple checked everything, go ahead and drill them. Now you can finish things off by mounting it all in. Now that we have the old cover out of the way, we can show you some of the really cool features on this new piece. Now just like the front, it's a big thick piece of fiberglass and as you can see, it matches the front stylistically as well. But probably the neatest feature on this setup is it already has molded openings so you have the option of running a dual exhaust system through it. Now that we have everything bolted together up here, the big temptation is going to be to slam the hood down, step back, take a look at your handiwork. Well, if you do this, you're going to have a major problem because if you remember right, we cut off the handle of the hood safety latch, which means you're going to have a heck of a time getting your hood back up. And that's what this little rod is for. It slides in the hole we drilled in the latch earlier and is held in place by this collar. Then you slide down here, you have a nylon tab that you mount here to this inner frame and to pop your hood, all you do is push up on the rod in the center of the grill. Once again, make sure it's all working right before you slam the hood down. After you get the bumper cover in place, you can go ahead and tighten the bolts to the factory mounts in the wheel well. Now, I know we already told you this before, but it's real important you don't over tighten bolts on fiberglass because you can crack it. Finally, all you have left to do back here is hook up the wiring for your license plate light, 
pop the plastic step tread, you were careful not to thrash back on, and you're done. And the last thing we're going to do up here on the front is put on these five and a half inch PIA driving lights that we got from Tennessee Speed Sport. Now you can wire these up a couple different ways. You can always use a switch that comes with the kit, or in our case, we're going to wire them up to the high beams so that these are only on when our bright lights are on. Well, as you can see, Project Durango Charger is starting to look like a one-of-a-kind SUV. And the best part is, everything we've done here today, you can do in your own driveway. Stay with us. we got more trucks to roll at you right after this. Up next on Trucks, we've got that one-of-a-kind S10 that'll blow your mind. Then, later in the show, we'll take you step-by-step -step through some steering wheel restoration. Thanks for staying with us, everybody. Well, there's no doubt sport trucks are a huge part of the light truck market. Among the most popular minis are the Ranger and S10. Speaking of S10s, today we're going to show you one of the hottest examples we've ever seen. And believe us, we've seen plenty at truck shows all across the country. This truck, owned by Tony Humphreys of Scottsboro, Alabama, has been featured in numerous magazines and at a show generally walks away with the first place trophy. That's easy to see looking at it now, but it didn't always look this good. Matter of fact, when Tony first bought it, the front end was crushed, the bed was all twisted up, and the frame was bent. Of course, to a how-to guy, all that means is the price is going to be right. With all that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at the interior on this boat side. Now, as you can see, they started with custom molded seats that are covered in gray leather and purple tweed and have graphics molded right into them. And that's only the beginning. They also covered the headliner, floorboards, as well as the door panels. And to finish everything off, it's a billet steering wheel. Oh, and by the way, if you're impressed with the interior, then you're definitely going to like what's under the tonneau cover. And that's right, the theme continues even in the business end. Now, before we get this thing up on the lift to show you the undercarriage, let's take a look under this cowl induction hood. Now they started with a stock 4.3 V6, and then to liven it up, they added underdrive pulleys, headers, and a stainless Y pipe. They also put on a performance air intake system, and of course everything was detailed and painted to match. Of course, any sport truck worth looking at has got to have a few body modifications. So to clean everything up, all the factory molding and emblems as well as the door handles have been shaved off. They also lost the tailgate handle and molded in a roll pan. Up front, you have a custom grill that's matched up with a bumper cover. Now, like we told you before, the frame on this truck was bent when they bought it. So they stripped it down, straightened it, and then hit it with a coat of paint to match the body. Now the suspension sits on airbags and that gives them a total of a six and a half inch drop in the front. The rear end is held in place with a ladder bar system and airbags are also used back here to give a total of a nine inch drop in the back. Now while everything we've shown you on this Chevy is top notch, it's the paint job that really grabs your attention. They started out innocently enough with just a yellow base coat. But by the time they put the spray gun down, more than 28 colors as well as one vivid imagination were completely spent. Yeah, that's an understatement. You may have noticed that the paint job on this truck is completely different on both sides. Now that's really cool because it's kind of like looking at two different trucks at the same time. Now it's also got over three gallons of clear on it, and that's necessary to smooth out the seams between these colors. Now the paint job also continues all the way through the door and into the door jams. It's this kind of attention to detail that you got to do if you want to win national shows. All you have to do is ask Tony and his buddies Keith, Don, Doug and Ed who helped him build this thing in only three and a half months. Stay with us, we got more trucks coming to you after this. Just can't get enough of trucks? Check us out online at truckstv.com. 
Thanks for staying with us, everybody. Now, there's a lot of nice aftermarket steering wheels out there, but a lot of you guys are into putting an old classic wheel into your truck because they're so unique. Now, the problem is most of these are pretty broken up by now. Now, you can take them down and have them recast, That'll cost you about 400 bucks. So we're going to show you how to do it yourself at a fraction of the cost. It's important to keep in mind, what we're going to show you today is for plastic wheels, not wooden ones. Now, we have two different types of wheels with completely different types of damage. But all we're going to need to repair them both are some files, a little sandpaper, as well as some epoxy and body filler. The first wheel we're going to work on is from the 50s, and it has a standard damage that you would expect. A lot of small little cracks. Now the first thing you need to do is to make sure you scrub the wheel really well with a good detergent to get rid of all the grease and grime. Then take a small file and open up the cracks. Now what this does is clean them out real well to give you a good bonding surface for your filler. On small cracks like this, using a standard body filler is plenty strong. The only thing you need to watch here is to make sure you overfill the cracks so you have plenty to sand later on. Now for wheels like this that have a lot more damage, obviously you need a different approach. We're going to use a two-part epoxy because it's a lot stronger and we're going to have to reconstruct part of this wheel. Now for spots like this that are split, best thing to do is to use a clamp to pull the pieces back together. Just make sure you don't glue the clamp to the wheel. Once you have it secure, take your time with the epoxy and follow the contours of the wheel the best you can. Once everything's dry, you can go ahead and start sanding. Of course, the idea here is to smooth everything up, but keep in mind, the epoxy and body filler is most likely going to be harder than the wheel, so don't get too deep into the wheel or you'll end up sanding waves into it. Obviously, the more time you spend on this step, the better the wheel is going to look when you're finished. Now, on a wheel like this that had a lot more damage, you not only have to sand it, but you also actually have to reconstruct the shape of the wheel and that'll take you a lot more time. Also, don't be surprised if you have to use more than one application of the epoxy. Once all your sanding's finished, all you have to do is hit it with a high quality paint and you're done. Another major plus to restoring an old steering wheel like this is even if you're not going to use it for yourself, you can take it to a swap meet and trade it or even sell it for a whole lot more than you'd think. Okay, so you've just spent all your savings building the motor that you've always wanted. Since you're not going to skimp on oil, you've decided to break it in with the synthetic. Well, you better hold on because that can be a big mistake. The reason is, synthetic oils are so slick that they can hinder in the break-in of the cam and the seating of the rings. That's how come most major cam grinders and engine builders recommend breaking a motor in with a standard oil and then going to a synthetic. And now truck gear, parts, tools, and equipment for pickups and sport utilities. Now for you guys that are into changing your own oil, which we really hope is all of you, you know how important a good filter wrench can be. Well, Facom has come out with this wrench. It's got an adjustable band to handle import filters all the way up to light commercial trucks. It's also got directional teeth that'll grip like a pipe wrench, and the hinge jaw gives you a ratcheting action that can make quick work of what can be a really messy job. Get a grip on your next oil change with this wrench from Facom for about 40 bucks. Now, one of the most overlooked areas when it comes to building a show quality vehicle is the hubs and rotors. Now, most guys have chrome and stainless steel everywhere else, but the rotors have been pretty ugly up to now. And that's because Willwood has come out with their polished aluminum hub and rotor combination. Now, not only do you get the benefits of Willwood's racing with drilled and slotted removable rotors, but you can also change your bolt pattern, which means that you can keep these and continually use them on your next projects. For 500 bucks, you won't break the bank either. Well, there's no doubt dead batteries can bring fast-paced lives to a screeching halt. But now you've got a way to take charge of that situation. How, you ask? Well, that's where the Secure Start Portable Jump Starter comes in. This little miracle worker can put fire back in your motor on a cold day, stays charged for up to a year, and can be recharged in a matter of minutes. 
It also has a halogen lamp for those nighttime emergencies. This unit from Boulder Technology starts at about $100 and takes the danger of asking a stranger for help out of the equation. That's going to do it for Truck Gear. Here's a preview of next week's show. Project Trail Boss gets a healthy dose of attitude and function with some fully integrated bumpers, front and rear, as well as a trail grabbing wheel and tire combination. After that, the guys will take you to Johnson Valley, California to watch the Dirty Dozen fight it out for the right to be crowned King of the Rocks. And if that's not enough, we also have some budget upgrades for you. That's all next week on Trucks. Well, that's going to do it for this week's show. We appreciate you hanging out with us. Yeah, we got more trucks to roll at you next week. All right, buddy. What's next for this? Oh, thing? I've got some plans for this. <laughs> I got some plans. I've been looking at it. Like what? I've been like, well, you know, a motor swap maybe. <laughs>